Well, here I am once again. The turbine guy is here to talk about renewable energy. Today, we are going to look at my house that I have in Bocalia, Florida. Small little stilt house, as you can see. And we're gonna talk about the three kilowatt photovoltaic or solar power system I have on the house. Now, quite interesting, you might go, well, I don't see nothing. Well, there are a bunch of racks up there, some rails. But what happened was, I had half of it on this side and half of it on that side, and it's an east and west house. So the sun wouldn't always be shining on it, and I think when the sun got lower angles, it would cause a lower voltage on the other side that would affect the energy production. So I took the eight modules that were on this side and moved them over to the other side. We'll see those in a minute when I get on the roof. And those eight modules are now mated with the other eight, and we have 16 modules over there facing east. The modules are Evergreen Solar, 175 watt. The uh, system is a grid tied battery backup system with a 12 battery battery bank. And I will bring that in and show you all of this in just a minute. Here we are up on the roof and we happen to have 16 evergreen 175 watt modules basically a three kilowatt system now if you look at how they're mounted this is the old style they just put them right on the ground there goop it all up and and leg bolt it right to the rafter however now since I, i've had these installed years ago newer technology allows for certain flashing underneath now something else that happens is every module as well as each rail is grounded every single one and you run all your grounds and you run them together and you run them down now these modules are hooked up in pairs to get 48 watts so right here is where you combine two pairs what happens is you plug the wires from one module, negative, into the positive of this module. Then you grab this positive and this negative and run them into here and combine them together from the solar wire to a THHN wire and you run it in the conduit all the way up into the box. Now here's the other side where we've got the first four hooked up. And then if we come down to the end, either the box is closed and they're the last four hooked up. Now if we look, once again, here's the three kilowatt system right here. Facing west. If you look at the conduits running all the THHNs, all the pairs in, to this combiner box, you see all eight breakers. Okay, we've reinstalled the cover on the uh, combiner box. Gives you your warning labels. Which you need to have by law labels on all these. And now that they're all combined, we run it one cable down into the house through a DC disconnect. All right, power comes down the house into the DC disconnect with its own happy warning labels and then you can't see it but it shoots right into the house there and this conduit going down goes to a ground rod all right here we are on the side of the house and what we have over here is the PV system disconnect and what happens is once the inverter ends up converting the power to AC electricity to go back to our panel into the grid they have to have a disconnect here and they have this for the main reason that when the firefighters show up if the house is burning down the first thing they can do is shut this system off right away and ensure that the PV system is shut off and they know there's no electricity coming from there very important next thing they have is the bi-directional digital meter see it all these have their warning labels as well as identification labels so you know what's hooked up and what's going on. 
Now you normally have a round spinning meter and what happens when you get a renewable system where energy could be going back up the grid, they put what's called a digital bi-directional meter on so you can measure energy going both ways. So when you send, say, five kilowatt hours up the grid today, to be on a nice sunny day, that you can get your five kilowatt hours back for free. All right, and now we are to the brains of the system. This is how it all operates. What happens is we got electricity that comes in, runs through a ground fault to make sure uh, something happens, it shuts down, and then to the charge controller over here. You can also, it runs through the charge controller shut off if you need to shut that off for maintenance. What the charge controller does is checks my 12 batteries, and I've got eight gel cell batteries, which, are, which were new back then, but they're old standard now. And I've got four AGMs, about 100 amp hours each total, so I have about 1,200 amp hours worth of energy, or about, I don't know, 400 amp hours worth of usable energy in these batteries without degrading them. So every day that charge controller, when it comes up, it checks to see, look, are these batteries charged? Are they charged? If they are, it charges, it charges them up if they aren't, I mean. And if, not, if they are charged, it sends uh, energy through the inverter back to the house into the grid and we use it there now once we get over to the grid you can either send it to the regular panel or I actually have an emergency sub panel that has a bunch of breakers in it so you use it wherever you need to in the house and if you produce extra the nice thing is it goes back up the grid and we've talked about that what happens though before the electricity can even get there you gotta run it out through a disconnect and back for the firefighters like I'll explain in a minute so what happens in here you have it connected this one's just a single 120 pole now normally you use uh, two because they want it balanced well the inverter I have is an old style inverter and it was modern technology at the time now just about all inverters come with 240 double breakers and that's how you back feed your system so it's balanced but if the power goes out forget this power goes out everything goes switch and the batteries and the solar will be running my emergency sub panel which is going to run my ceiling fans my outlets my microwave my uh, refrigerators it's going to run everything important in order to get through and Hurricane Irma just came through and we went uh, over a week running on our batteries, keeping everything going and being able to survive. All right, folks. Well, today we talked about the nearly three kilowatt photovoltaic system with battery backup and emergency sub panel that I've installed on this house. We went through the 16 Evergreen modules, the Outback inverter that's in there, charge controller, the 12 batteries, as well as how it's tied to the grid through your panel, through a breaker, or it can go the other way and go uh, to the emergency sub panel. So when the power goes out, I can run what I need to. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me, or I can design a system like this for you or anything to meet your needs. If you simply want to uh, contact me at my website, gogreenenergyonline.com.